I'm really sorry this is such a long video. Hey guys, um, so let's uh, go into the dread thing and I'm gonna show you how to uh, make an extension. I'm not gonna really be able to show you how to start a dread because obviously these are already started, but I could real quick just give you some pointers um, if you're wanting to start your dreads yourself versus going to a saloon, <laughs> I started from the bottom and the back. And the reason why is because it takes a while and you're going to look really silly if you start from the top and then all your other dreads or all your other hair is not dread. So I recommend that you start from the back and the bottom. And that way as you're working up, it actually looks kind of pretty as you're working your way up and then you have like natural hair just flowing right here um number one i know that a lot of people will have hair that's like you know like this long or something and like oh i'm gonna dread it if you do it's gonna be like this big and that's gonna be really hard to do and i guess you could try to put an extension in it but you really want your hair to be about 10 inches long before you try to start to dread it that way it at least is dreadable so Basically, you'll take like tiny little rubber bands. I used to have a thousand of them all over my house, but you know, whatever. But you start sectioning it off in little squares and it really helps to have a mirror or an awesome friend. And you'll wanna do sections that are about an inch by an inch and you'll checkerboard them. Like, let me show you on this right here. So like, if, this was the back of your head. That's nice, huh? If this was the back of your head, you would section the hair like this and put a little rubber band around that hair like that. Your next row, you would kind of checkerboard it the best you can, something like this. You see how they're not like lined up and that's gonna keep them from looking weird. You'll like you'll have that scalpy look if you don't do that. So you'll want it to kind of be in this pattern the best you can really, something like this, like bricks. Yeah. All right, so once you have that, um, there's a bunch of videos on like how to get that started. I'll try to find a really good one and then like link it down below so that you can see like how to start your dreads as far as like backcombing or rip and twist or crochet or whatever method you want to use. But I'm just gonna show you how to make an extension which most of mine are extensions. I'll pull this nest out. Yeah. <laughs> I need to wash them. We went camping and I haven't washed them since I got home because I haven't had time. So my natural hair is about, or my natural dread I'll say is about like right here. And the rest of this is an extension that I made. And honestly, like my hair has been growing super fast since I dreaded it. I can tell where my natural hair is uh, because I know where I put them. So this one's about right here. That's my natural hair. The rest of this is an extension. So you can see like if I didn't have the extensions, how short they would be. All right. So I wanted to add a few extensions to some that are like nubby short, like this one. Um, I have a little bead in it to crimp it down because while I was camping, I started to notice that my extension was trying to separate and uh, it, it wasn't good. It wasn't good news. So I crimped it down and I was like, hang in there little buddy. I'll get home and fix you. And there's a way to fix it, but I just didn't while I was camping. I didn't have time or the right tools. So some of these you can see are shorter and I don't mind it. I like them being all different lengths, but when I try to put them up, it does become a pain in my butt. All right. So what do you need to, uh, make your extensions? First, you need hair. This is the one that I picked up. I picked up this one because they didn't have the one that I normally use and they were all out of it. But this will make, I don't know, maybe about 10 extensions or so. It's not gonna be a whole lot. This was 35 bucks for this one. They have some that are cheaper. I really recommend just getting a hair blend. You don't need to get real human hair. It's, you know, the blend is fine. Um, it makes it so that it's really hard to color, but it will, take color. If you do want to color yours, I recommend getting the platinum blonde. And if you definitely want to color it, maybe color it before you dread it. Kind of a good idea. 
but you can technically color them <laughs> after you dry it. It's just not recommended because it's really hard to wash that crap out. So this is what I have. This is 18 inches. A uh, good rule of thumb is uh, it's going to be about a third the length once you dread it. So if this is 18 inches, these are going to be about like this long once it's dreaded. So what I do is I do two and then I attach them together to make a nice long extension. And I'll show you how to do that. And the other thing you're going to need is a metal comb like this. And this is a lice comb, but it's a metal comb. So I think you can just probably find a metal comb that'll be cheaper than trying to find a dread comb. Especially the items get marked up. The other thing you'll need is this <laughs> teeny little 0 0.05 millimeter um, crochet hook. Let's see, it's super tiny. And this one I actually got on Amazon. It came with two and it came with some beads. These are really great. I bent the crap out of my other ones somehow. I don't know, I found it on the floor like beat crap. So this is the last one I have. I need to order some more just in case this one gets beat up. Uh, don't use a plastic comb. While this one is nice and firm and sturdy, it's going to not work. You don't want to use a plastic comb. You want one with the teeth really close together and metal. You can see I've already just bent the shit out of these doing other extensions. And you'll need some scissors. All right, let's get started. All right, this is called a track. So this really thin thing at the top and I'm probably thinking what I did, which was what the hell did I get myself into? I'm only gonna do one. I'm not really in the mood to mess with this, but I know some of you guys have been asking me. Shake it out, shake it out. This is what I'm dealing with. Okay. All right, first you're gonna want to determine the thickness that you want your dreads. Sometimes your dreads will be about the thickness of your finger, or I'm sorry, your thumb. Sometimes it'll be like the thickness of your pinky. So what I'm gonna do is if I wanted the thickness of my thumb, I'm gonna hold my thumb up like this, and I'm gonna fold that three times if I want it that thickness. Two, three. And that is where I want it. So I'll pull all this hair aside like this. And then this will be the dread that I make. And it's uh, good to keep some kind of reference. <laughs> and then you take off your sock because you're going to want to use your toe or whatever. Use a, use a coat hanger or other people do that. The first one's really hard because it's the end of the track and you really have nothing to like grip it onto. But I'm going to do my best here. So it's okay if the end right here doesn't get dreaded up because you're gonna release that anyway. So I'm gonna hold it like this. I'm gonna use the rip and twist method. Then I'm going to palm roll it and then I'm gonna crochet it. And let's get started. So rip and twist is gonna be holding the ends together like this. You separate the ends like so. Lay them on top of each other and then separate again and rip. And you're gonna do this over and over again. So I'm gonna lay them back on top of each other, separate somewhere else, lay them on top, and rip. And you see it's starting to mat up right there, nice and good. And do this a few times. Now I'm gonna take my metal comb Hold all this and starting up here at the top of the mat, matting, I'm gonna just poke it in and push it up and pull out. Poke it in, push up. So I'm doing kind of this motion with it. It's like this, uh, I don't know how to describe that motion, whatever, you can see. Just like that. Now back to the rip and twist. I'm just gonna repeat this process all the way down. What is it, Milano?
Okay, here we go. I got our little fuzzy rat tail. Now, I'm gonna take my hands and to palm roll, you're gonna kind of do this circular motion while you pull outward like this, so just like this. So that's what I'm gonna do is really getting those frizzies tucked in. I'm just pulling those back in because they start to tangle up in my fingers. What is it, baby? As you can see, it's starting to look more like a dread right there. But you can also see how stinking short it is. And I'm telling you, they get short. If you can find 24 inches of hair, that's really cool. That's nice. All right, now I'm gonna do one more and then I'm gonna show you how to attach them. You can see how long this one is now that I've dreaded it. But I'm going to do one more and then I'm gonna show you what to do to make it longer. Using my measurement to make sure they're the same length. I think. About like that. And fold it again. Right there. Separate that. You know, it's some kind of bravery to show your stinking toes on the internet. I don't like my toes. It's one of those things I've always hated, but whatever. Everybody's got weird feet. I guess not everybody. Some people have pretty feet. <laughs> and I do not. They have rough, gross feet because they do things like go outside and stick them in the mud. It goes by pretty quick. just buy dreadlock extensions they're stupid expensive they're like ten dollars per extension it's pretty crazy but if you don't have time for this there's uh some good websites where you can get some extension extensions already made i've never done it i've never bought extensions just can't justify it i'm like it's easy enough to make them and then you don't have to wait for it to be shipped to you and you know what the deal is with it because you made it. Sometimes I like to be more intimate with my dreads because I made them. I know what's going on with it. This one feels weird. Okay, I'll fix it when I crochet it. All right. Yeah. So it seems really chubby, but it'll thin out. All right. I'm going to attach these two. So I'm going to cut off one of them. Boop. I cut it off at the uh, track. And now what I'm going to do is loosen this end up. Oh, I'm not even in the frame. Sorry. I'm just going to loosen this end up with my 
comb here. You want a couple inches loosened. I'll probably do a little bit more. If you don't get enough of these, it'll kind of start to do this like cell division thing. If you remember back in school with the cell division and they start to do that little, what's, what's the little separation? So the cell will be like this and then it goes bloop, 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 and then pinches off. So if you don't get enough of this in there, the, the dread will start like this. Sorry, I'm shaky. I had a lot of coffee. So the, the dread will be like this where they meet and then eventually they'll kind of start to do this and then it'll thin out like this. And if you're not careful, they can split. So when you start to see them do that, uh, there's ways to fix that. I might make another video on like how to fix it if they start to do their like cell division thing. All right, so I'm doing this weird uh, Lorax mustache thing with it. Set that aside. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this one because the end of it's still pretty loose. I'm just gonna kind of pull it apart here. And then do my Lorax thing with it like this. Now you take those and you stick them together opposite. So this one's going this uh, left to right. This one's going to go uh, front to back like this. Can you see that okay? And now hold it in place like this. And then pull these down onto the side of this one. Hey, 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 hey sometimes doesn't go as perfectly. <laughs> you have to do it a couple of times. Get on there. Get on there. All right, hang on. Quit being stubborn. Hold that in place. I'll like pull this one down. This takes a little bit of effort. And this is really important to get right because you don't want them to come apart. All right, now I'm gonna start at the top or this, this little frizzy thing here. I'm gonna start there and I'm gonna crochet that in. And here's my crochet hook. I'm turning, oh, get in the frame. I'm turning the hook toward me. So the open end is facing toward me and I'm holding it like a pencil. And I'm gonna do this motion here. I'll do it slowly so you can see. It'll be like this. So you go in, grab the other side, come out, release. Go in, grab the other side, come out, release. I'm coming in. I'm gonna make big strokes for you guys so that you can see what I'm doing here. I'm going in, grabbing the other side, come out and release. And this will be very tiny motions if you do it quickly like this. And just go around in a circle around your dread. It's gonna take some time to do this. And I'm using this hand to sort of pinch the dread together, make it more compact. Now some people will do something, I think it's called uh, boxing or chain or something like that where you go just around the outside of the dread. That's what my, I think that's what my uh, hairstylist does whenever I go get her to do my maintenance because I can't really maintain the back of my dreads very well. I'm going to do this down here. So that's barely locked in right there. And it takes a while for your dreads to become mature and while they're maturing they're going to be itchy like Brillo pads or something. It's pretty miserable. Um, some tricks that you can do, get a scarf, like I recommend wearing a scarf, or you can get one of those saggy hats. They have some pretty ones, or you can make one. Uh, my friend taught me how to make one. It's pretty easy, and I like wearing it because it's girly, and you can do, like I said, scarves. There's all kinds of ways that you can tie them back so that they're off of your skin, because my goodness, they are so itchy. As you can see, I've really ignored this middle part right now. 
and I'm just working on getting these two to stay together. See so those little weird things where I split them like this and stuck them together. I'm really just working on like this part and this part. You'll see why. Okay, one more palm roll before I crochet the whole thing. Bink. All right, now I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna start to crochet down. Same method, turn the hook toward you, pinch it with your other hand and kind of squish it together. This needle is so tiny that I have cut my finger with it trying to crochet into a mature dread really dumb to try to crochet into a mature dread because it's like really hard like the the dreadlock is really stiff so it's hard to crochet into it you want to make sure that you're putting that needle in between your fingers this is the finger I cut and I stabbed into my finger I thought like oh I could just get a thimble right but it, you really need to be able to feel what you're doing so you can't really use like a thimble to do this unless you are really awesome with a thimble. I guess that would work. Or maybe one of those like uh, finger condom looking things. I don't know, I like being able to feel what I'm doing. It helps to make this go faster. So I'm just gonna crochet all the way down. I'm gonna palm roll and then crochet again. Now these like ends like this, you're like, oh gosh, that's a lot of hair. They'll end up breaking off and looking like this. So I don't know really why they break off, nor do I really care to explain it even if I did, but they will break off and end up looking more like this. So at first they'll be like that, but over time, all of those will start to come off. Now I'm going to crochet one more time. And guys, I don't know if this goes without saying, I am by no means a professional at this. Like, if you want a professional to do your dreadlocks, go to a professional. You're watching a YouTube video on how to do this yourself. Why are you analyzing every little thing I'm doing wrong? I know I'm not doing this right. I'm aware. A professional person would would tear this video apart and say, don't follow any of this advice. Go to a professional. You know what? You should. But if you're stubborn like me, you can make them at home. Because I figured out how to do this by watching YouTube tutorials, a bunch of different ones, or like reading blogs on what to do and what not to do. And should you use dread wax? Should you use locking spray? Should you crochet or not to crochet should you palm roll all this other crap and you know what do you except wax don't put wax in them ever everybody hates wax mostly because people put too much in their hair and don't know how to properly do it it's way too easy to overdo wax so I don't recommend it have I ever put wax in my hair that's my secret that's my secret, and you'll never know. <laughs> I had dreadlocks like 10 years ago, and I got lazy about doing my separation on my scalp. And I made my, I made my separations way too big. They were like two inches, so my dreads were enormous. It was terrible. All right. I'm not going to worry too much about the tip right here. It'll lock itself up. Really get that middle part where I conjoined my twins. Make sure that's nice and snug. Give it a pull, good. Roll once more. All right, there we go. I dropped my camera. Ooh, that's a mess behind me. Okay, so as you can see, uh, I'm going to just cut this off of here, right off the track. You will 
apply this to your hair the same way that you did those extensions that you stuck together. I want to show you up close just the difference. It might be kind of hard to see. This is a more mature dread, and this is the new one that we did. And you can definitely see the color difference. I wash mine uh, about once a month with shimmer lights, so it like maintains the silvery color. It's been an extremely long time since I put silver in them, though. Or should I say this, this shimmer lights? But once I apply this, we will stick it on that one. What do you think? Right there? That's a little short guy. It's really thin though, so I don't know. Mm, I might not stick it on that one. I'm just kind of going around and feeling. I definitely wanted to put one on this one, but this one's pretty thin, so we'll see. But I'm gonna apply this and then show you guys what it looks like. I found this one that I wanna stick it on. I think in the back, the thicker dread. Most of my dreads are like pencil thin. Most of them. I'd say like one of those, my first pencil, pencil thin. Alright, I just want to make sure I've got it all separated. I'm just gonna... Oh, you know what I use for a hair tie? I use those headband things. They're super cheap and they work really great for dreads. Just pulling these aside, doing my uh, side ponytail like it's the 90s, guys. Oh my god, the big shirt makes that look ridiculous. Alright, so I'm just gonna comb out the end of this. Beep, 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 beep. Okay, I'm breaking one of the rules and I'm getting impatient. Why are you guys even yelling? Hey, Milano, are you starting things? Okay, I'm gonna back comb a good deal of it. I'm gonna separate it pretty evenly. I feel like I might need to comb out more. I'm gonna get nervous about that amount, that much because you want plenty. Because otherwise it's gonna split. Like it won't take, I guess in a sense. You want your dreadlock to mold together and become one. You want them to be one dreadlock. And you don't wanna find it in your shower. Which happens, especially like when you do a shitload of them all at once, uh, you will find them in your shower because they will, you just can't expect all of them to cling into your hair. I did mine right before I went to Ibiza and I think I lost like 11 dreads while I was there. Like no crap. I didn't feel like three weeks before I went to Ibiza. I don't know why I didn't think that that was a bad idea. All right, now I'm going to take this one and comb that out. Hey, this one's being really difficult. I don't want to be combed out. I don't want any part of this. This one I don't care if I rip on it. I just don't want to rip on the other one because I don't want to do that to my head. That sounds painful. Take this bad boy with all of its nattiness. Separate the same way you did with the other one. Pull it nice and snug. You're going to do the same thing to this one. Separate. And for those of you that think you have to shave your head to get dreadlocks out, you don't. You just comb them out. Do that uh, Lorax mustache, stick them together. Now, the ones you pull up are the ones that you're going to stitch in first. Make sure that they're separate from the ones that you pulled down. And I'm going to pinch both, make sure that they are close together. As in the, the top dread and the bottom dread are like nice and snug. That, make sure they're making out in a sense. And you can see, like, these are longer than the dread is, but that'll be okay. Once I start pulling, it'll be okay. So get them where you want them. Now on one side, I've got hair. On the other side, I've got hair. And I'm just going to spread it out around the dread. Like so. Can you see what I'm doing? Can you see what I'm doing? Take my crochet hook, which was stuck in the hair. 
turn the hook toward me. And just by feel, this is why sometimes this takes practice, just by feel, I'm going to crochet that in. I'm pulling it away from my head because I have little flyaways and I don't want to accidentally grab those stupid flyaways. They will lock in and then your dread will be just stuck to your head in a weird way. So I'm working my way in random places on one side of the dread, just pulling through. And now I'm going to turn it and do it to the other side. I know that this is less helpful than I think that it is. I'm just pulling through and creating that interwoven lock of hair. It's hard for me to remember to, I'm gonna put my knee up, that always helps. Rest your arm on your knee. Ow, stab myself. As you can see, this is what it looks like right now. This is where they meet. This is the hair from the uh, original dread down onto the new dread. So I'm gonna take that and do the same thing. I'm gonna spread it out. I'm gonna spread my old dread hair around the new dread. Take this side, spread it, and just, that way it's all random and mixed up. It's not just in one spot. What is on this thing? It tastes like baby powder. All right, just doing that. And again, I skipped that middle part where they meet together right here. And that way, because if I did this part, it would pull those hairs together before I had a chance to lock them down there. So there's a reason why you want to skip that middle part at first. I know that it's probably not as intuitive. I hope that it makes sense. That's all I can say. But you can either trust me or not, but if you don't trust me, you're going to end up having that like division between your dreads if you start to crochet that middle part first. Essentially, I'm getting this side snug and this side snug before this. If I did this first, it would, okay, it would essentially pull all that hair up and all this hair back, which would defeat the purpose. Um, this way, I'm, I'm getting these two secure and then doing this side. So I hope that makes sense. If not, whatever. Do you. Make your mistakes. I've made mine. All right. Just making sure that that's nice and locked. All right, now I'm gonna start working my way into that weird thing there. I'm telling you, this takes a while just to put in a dread. Yeah, make the dread and then put it in. It takes a while. It took me like a week to do all of my dreads and then um, just over you know, the course of some months, I would every now and then just make an extension or two and put them in. There's no way I was gonna sit there forever doing this. I did it while I was studying for school, you know. You're reading and doing this is fine. If you can hold a book open with your toes, it's really convenient. <sighs> Blue is playing with the monkeys. That's really cute. There's little toy monkeys in there. All right, now I'm just kind of going to the end here. Pinching with my other fingers. Beep, 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 beep. Um, these will eventually break off. Don't forget that. They'll eventually break off and look more like this. So you can leave it or you can cut it. I'm probably going to leave it. I don't really care. It just means that whenever you wash your hair and it's wet and you get out of the shower and you, it's going to drip into your butt crack. That's all it means. So you can cut it or leave it. I don't care. Just kind of keep doing this, and that'll help to secure it. And there it is. All right, guys. If you have any other questions about dreadlocks, let me know in the comments below, and I will try my best to address those. Um, the good thing about dreadlocks is that you're supposed to not give a crap about them and just ignore them, but we all know that. Um, that's never the case with your hair if you're a woman. You like it. You want to do things to it. You want to color it and make it yours. So let me know if you guys have any questions about doing dreads, any little like troubleshooting or anything. 
and I am more than happy to make a video for you guys and all that fun stuff. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing, all that other stuff and listening to my boring butt talk about this for way too long. Bye.